like an honorable father. If Senor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina, like him as she is. I wonder that you are still talking, Senor Benedict. Nobody likes you. What? My dear lady disdain. Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die when it has such meat food to feed, Senor Benedict? Courtesy itself would turn to disdain if you came in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would I could find in my heart I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled by a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I'm of your mind for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than hear a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse than for such a face as yours. Well, you are a rare parrot, teacher. Every word of my tongue is better than least yours. I would my horse have the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer, but keep your way, in God's name, I have done. You always end in a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the son of all, Leonardo. Senor Claudio. Your Benedict, my good friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I tell him we shall stay at least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. I dare say he is no hypocrite, but prays from his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I have not of many words, but I thank you. Please, your grace, lead on. <laughs> your hand, Leonardo, we'll go to him. That note's daughter, Senor Leonardo. I noted her not, but I looked on her. Oh, but she not a modest young lady. You question me as an honest man should do for my simple, true judgment, or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? <laughs> I pray thee speak in sober judgment. Oh, I have faith. Methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and, and too little for a great praise. Only this combination I can afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome. And being no other, but as she is, I do not like her. <laughs> <laughs> thou thinkest I am a sport, I pray thee tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. <laughs> but speak you this with a sad brow, or do you play the flouting jack to tell us Cupid is a good hair finder and Vulcan a rare carpenter? Come, and what key shall a man take you to go in the song? Mine eye, she is the fairest lady I ever looked upon. Yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There's her cousin, and she were not possessed with a fury, exceeds her in much in beauty as the first of May, not the last of December. I hope you have no intent to turn husband. Have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I'd sworn the contrary, if Kira be my wife. Is it come to this? A faith hath not the world one man who will wear his cap with suspicion. Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go to it, faith, and thou wilt needs thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it, and sigh away Sundays. Look, Don Pedro is returned to see you. What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonardo's? I would your grace would command me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. Oh, you hear, Count Claudio? I can be a secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so. But on my allegiance, <laughs> mark you this, on my allegiance, is in love. With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonato's short daughter. <laughs> <laughs> if this were so, so were it utter. Like the old tale, my lord, it is not so, nor twas not so. But indeed, God forbid it should be so. If my passion change not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And by my troth, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, my lord, I spoke mine. <laughs> that I love her, I feel. <laughs> that she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And never could maintain his part, but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. And that she brought me up, I likewise give her humble thanks. But that I will have a reachy winded in my forehead, or hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any, I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is, for the which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die look pale with love. <laughs> with <laughs> anger, uh, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. That ever I lose more blood with love, and I will get again with drinking. 
pick out my eyes with a ballad maker's pen and hang me up at the door of a brothel house for the sign of blind Cupid. Well, as time shall try. In time, the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull, hey, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck out the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted, and in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify under my side. Here you may see Benedict the married man. <laughs> if this should ever happen, thou wouldst be born mad. Nay, if Cupid hath not spent all his quiver in Venice, thou wilt quake for this short... <laughs> I look for an earthquake, too, then. Will you temporize with the hour? In the meantime, repair to Leonardo's. Commend me to him and tell him I will not fail him and suffer, for he hath made great preparation. I have almost matter enough in me for such an embassy, and so I commit you to the swishing of God from my house, if I had it. The 6th of July, your loving friend, Benedict. Nay, mock not, mock not, but the body of your discourse is sometimes guarded with fragments, and the guards are but slightly basted on neither. Ere you flout old ends any further, examine your conscience. Oh, I leave you. My liege, your highness now may do me good. Oh, my love. <laughs> about with your friend. So you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing. I am yours for the walk, especially when I walk away. With me in your company. I may say so when I please. And when pleasing you to say so. When I like your favor. For <laughs> God's offense, the loot should look me like the cave. My visor is Philemon's roof. Within the house is Joe. <laughs> Why, then your visor should be Speak low, if you speak low. Well, I would you did like me. So would not I, for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. Which is one? I say my prayers aloud. I love you the better, the hearers may cry amen. God, match me with a good dancer. Amen. And God, keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. No more words, the clerk is answered. I know you well enough. You are Signor Antonio. Not a word, I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell you true, I counterfeit him. You could never do him so well, well unless you were the very man. Here is his dry hand up and down. You are he. You are he. Not a word I am not. Come, come. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Go to, mom. You are he. Graces will appear, and there's an end. Will you not tell me you told me so? Oh, uh, not now. You, you shall pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Oh, uh, no, not now. What's he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? He's the prince's jester. A very dull fool. <laughs> Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. I am sure he is in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. <coughs> When I know the gentleman, I'll, I'll tell him what you say. Oh, do, do. He'll but break a comparison or two on me, which, for adventure, neither mark nor laugh at, strikes him into melancholy. And then there's a partridge we say, for the fool will eat no supper that night. We must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Nay, if they lead to any ill, I'll leave them at the next turning. <laughs> myself wrong. I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter, disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. 
Good. Signor, where's the Count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord, I have played the part of Lady Fame. I found him here as melancholy as a lodge in a war, and I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady, and I offered him my company to a willow tree to bind him up a rod as being worthy to be whipped. To be whipped? What's his fault? A flat transgression of a schoolboy who, being overjoyed with finding a bird's nest, shows it his companion, and he steals it. Wilt thou make a trust a transgression? The transgression is in the stealer. Yet, the rod he might have bestowed on you, who, as I take it, have stolen his bird's nest. <laughs> I will but teach them to sing and restore them to the owner. By my faith, if their singing answer your saying, you say honestly. The lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh! She misused me past the endurance of a block. An oak tree, but with one green leaf on it, would have answered her. My very visor began to assume life and scold with her. Supremely, not thinking I had been myself, that I was duller than a great thaw, that I was the prince's jester, huddling jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poignards and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect her to the point of star. <laughs> I would not marry her if she were endowed with all Adam had left him before he transgressed. Indeed, all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follow her. Look, here she comes. Will your grace now command me any slight errand to the world's end? I will now go on the slightest errand to the antipodes that you can devise to send me on. I will fetch you a toothpicker now from the furthest inch of Asia. Uh, bring you the length of Prester John's foot, fetch you a hair off the great Chom's beard. Do you any emissage to the pygmies rather than hold three words conference with this harpy? <laughs> you have no employment for me. None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, <laughs> sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed. He lent it me a while, and I gave him good use for it, a double heart for his single one. Marry, once before, he won it of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord, lest I prove the mother of fools. I brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Ah. Count, wherefore art thou sad? Not sad, my lord. How then? Sick. Neither, my lord. The count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil, count. Civil as an aura. Something of that jealous complexion. I think you're blazoned to be true. <laughs> Though, if it be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I wooed in thy name. And fair hero is one. I broke with her father, and his goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. <laughs> Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made the match, and ungrace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. Silence is the perfect herald of joy. I were but a little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. Give away myself for you and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin. Or if you cannot stop his mouth with a kiss, let him not speak neither. <laughs> <laughs> if faith may, lady, you have a merry heart. I, the last poor fool that keeps to the windy side of care, oh, my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. <laughs> Good Lord, for an alliance. Thus goes everyone to the world but I. I may sit in the corner and cry, I hope for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I would get one. I'd rather have one of your fathers get it. But how can Grace marry a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands to make you come by them. <laughs> Will you have me, Lady? <laughs> no, not unless I might have another for working days. Your Grace is far too costly to wear every day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the drum and the fife! Now had he rather hear the tabor and the pipe? Shall I be so converted? One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, 
One woman shall not come in my grace. <laughs> Rich she shall be, that's certain. <laughs> Wise or I'll none. Virtuous or I'll never cheapen her. Fair or I'll never look on her. Mild or come not near me. Noble or not I for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician. And her hair shall be... <clears throat> of what color it please God. Prince and Monsieur Love. They will hide me in the arbor. <laughs> Shall we hear this music? Ay, my good lord, how still the evening is, as hushed on purpose to grace harmony. See where Benedict hath hid himself. Oh, very well, my lord. The music ended. We'll fit the kid fox with a penny's worth. Come, Balthazar. We'll hear that song again. Oh, good my lord. Tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. Is the witness still of excellency to put a strange face on his own perfection? I pray thee sing and let me woo. Because you talk of wooing. I will sing, since many a wooer doth commence his suit. To her he thinks not worthy, yet he woos, yet will he swear he loves. Nay, pray thee, come, or if thou wilt hope longer argument, do it in notes. Note this before my notes. There's not a note of mine worth the note. Why, these are very conscious that he speaks. No notes for sooth, and nothing. Now divine air, now is his soul ravished. Is it not strange that sheep's guts should hail souls out of men's bodies? Well, a horn for my money when all's done. Sigh no more, lady, sigh no more. Men were deceivers ever. One foot in the sea and one in the shore. To one thing constant never. Then sigh not so, but let them go. And me, you blithe and body, converting all your sounds of woe to Kedani Nani. Sing no more, Ditty, sing no more of dumb so full and heavy. Fraud a man was ever so, since summer first was leafy. Then sigh not so, but let them go. And me, you blithe and body, converting all your sounds of woe. Hey, naughty, naughty. By my throat, good song. And a new singer, my lord. Hey. Ha! <laughs> no, no, Faith, thou singest well enough for it. And he had been a dog that should have howled thus, they would have hanged him. <laughs> and I hope his bad voice felt bode no mischief. I had as lief have heard the night raven come what play could come after. Yea, Harry, dost thou hear, Balthazar? I pray to get us some excellent music. Tomorrow night we would have it at the Lady Hero's chamber window. The best I can, my lord. Do so. Farewell. <laughs> Come hither, Leonardo. What was it you spoke of today that your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I stalk on, stalk on, the foul sits. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner? By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. Tis past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Oh, faith like a no. Oh, God, counterfeit. There was never counterfeit of passion came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why, what effects of passion shows she? What effects, my lord? Well, she will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. Well, how? How, I pray you. You amaze me. I would have thought her spirit would have been invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. I should think this a gull, but that the white-bearded fellow speaks it. Mavery cannot, sure, hide himself in such reverence. Take any affection, hold it up. Uh, has she made her affections known to Benedict? No, and swears she never will. That's her torment. Tis even so. So your daughter says, Shall I, she says, who have so often countered him with scorn, write to him that I love him. This 
says she now when she is beginning to write to him, for, for she'll be up twenty times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she have writ a sheet of paper. My daughter says so. And you talk of a sheet of paper. I, I remember a pretty jest your daughter told us of. Oh, that when she had writ it and was reading it over, she found Beatrice and Benedict uh, between the sheet. <laughs> that. Oh, she, she tore the letter into a thousand Hapens railed at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew would flout her. I measure him, says she, by my own spirit, for I should flout him if he writ to me. Yea, though I love him, I should. Then, down upon her knees she falls, weeps, sobs, <laughs> beats her heart, tears her hair, prays. Curses! Oh, sweet Benedict, God, give me patience! Oh, she doth indeed, and the, and the ecstasy hath so much overborne her that my daughter is sometime afeard she will do a desperate outrage to herself. Tis very true! It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To what end? He but make a jest of it and torment the poor lady worse. And he should, it were an alms to hang him. For she is an excellent sweet lady. Out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but in loving Benedict. Oh, my lord, wisdom and blood combating in so tender a body, we have ten proofs to one that blood hath the victory. I am sorry for her, as I have just cause, being her uncle and her guardian. I would she had bestowed this dotage on me. I would have doffed all other respects and made her half myself. I pray you tell Benedict of it, and hear what I will say. Were it good, think you? Oh, Hero thinks she will die, for she says she will die, if he love her not. And she will die if he woo her, rather than she will bake one breath of her accustomed crossness. For she doth well, if she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it, for the man, as you know all, hath a contemptible spirit. He is a very proper man. He hath indeed some good outward habits. Forgotten in my mind, he's very wise. He doth show some sparks that are like wit. And I take him to be valiant. As Hector, I assure you. And in the managing of quarrels, you may say he is wise. For either he avoids them with great discretion or undertakes them with a most Christian like fear. If he do fear God, he must necessarily keep the peace. If he break the peace, he ought to enter into a quarrel with fear and trembling. And so will he do, for the man doth fear God. <laughs> Howsoever, really, it seems not in him by some large jests he will make. Well, I am sorry for your niece. Shall we go seek Benedict and tell him of her love? Oh, never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out in good counsel. Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. Well, we will hear further of it by your daughter. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict well. I could wish he would so examine himself to see how much he is unworthy so good a lady. My lord, dinner is ready. Will you walk? If you do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> Let there be the same net spread for her, and that must your daughter and her gentlewomen carry. The sport will be when each holds one opinion of another's dotage, and no such matter. That's the scene that I would see, which will be merely a dumb show. Let us send her to call him in to dinner. This can be no trick. <laughs> the conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from a hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me? <laughs> Why, it must be requited. I hear how I am censured. They say I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say, too, the lady will sooner die than give any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. They say the lady is fair. Tis so. I can bear them witness. They say she is virtuous. Tis a truth. I cannot reprove them. And wise, but for loving me. <laughs> I may chance have some 
odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me because I have railed so long against marriage. <laughs> but doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall quips and sentences and these paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No. The world must be peopled. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. <laughs> Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. <laughs>
There's no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be a fancy he hath strange disguises, as to be a Dutchman today and a Frenchman tomorrow, <laughs> or to be in the shape of two countries at once, a German from the waist downward, all slops, and a Spaniard from the hip upward, no doublet. <laughs> you be not in love with some woman. There's no believing old signs. Precious cat all morning, what should that mo? <laughs> Man rubs himself with cigarettes. Can you smell him out by him? <laughs> much to say the sweet use in love. The greatest note of it is his melancholy. Does he want to wash his face? Yea, or to paint himself, for the which I hear what they say of him. Nay, but his jesting spirit, which is now crept into a loose string and now governed by stops. Indeed, that tells a heavy tale for him. Conclude, Conclude he is in love. Nay. But I know who loves him. That would I know too. I warrant one who knows him not. Yes, and his ill conditions. Eh, despite of all, dies for him. She shall be buried with her face upward. <laughs> Yet is this no charm for the toothache? <laughs> Old Signor, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak in your ear, which these hobby horses must not hear. <laughs> him about Beatrice? Hero and Margaret have by this played their part with Beatrice, and then the two bears will not bite one another when they meet. <laughs> <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Good day, brother. If it leisure served, I would speak with you. In private. If it please you, although Count Claudio may hear if I would speak of concerns him. Why, what's the matter? Who means your lordship to be married tomorrow? No, he does. I know not that when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not, but that appear hereafter, named better of me, but that I now will manifest for my brother. I think he holds you well, and in the dear set part, I hope to effect your ensuing marriage. Surely suit ill spent and labor ill bestowed. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and, says Shorten, for she's been too long the talking of, the lady is disloyal. Who, hero? Even she, Leonardo's hero, your hero, every- I do. If 
if either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be enjoined to charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any count? I dare make his answer none. What men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not know what they do. Why, how now, interjections? Why, then, some be of laughing as ha ha ha. Friar, stand thee by. Father, by your leave. Will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your daughter, as freely, son, as God did give her me? And what have I to give you back, whose worth may counterpose this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Sweet Prince, learn me noble thing from this. There, Leonardo, take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her virtue. Behold, how like a maid she blushes here. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself with all? Comes not that blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear all those that see her here that she were a maid by these exterior shows? She is not. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to the proved wanton. Dear my lord, if you in your pure of piety and impious purity for thee, I'll lock up all the gates of love. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? How now, cousin? Oh, we're forcing you down. Come, let us go. These things come. Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. Oh, how now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. Just thou look up. <laughs> Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why, doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, do not ope thine eyes. For did I think thou wouldst not quickly die? Thought I thy spirits were stronger than thy shames, myself would, on the rearward of reproaches, strike at thy love. Grieved I, I had but one. Chid I for that at frugal nature's frame, or oh, one too much by thee. Why had I one? Why ever wast thou lovely in mine eyes? Why had I not, with charitable hand, took up a beggar's issue at my gates, who smirched thus? and mired with infamy, I might have said, no part of it is mine. This shame derives itself from unknown loins. But she, oh. Sire, that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. How much the man might deserve of me that would write her. Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as thee. It's not that strange. As strange as the thing I know not. It were as possible for me to say I love nothing so well as you. But believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce I can be devised to it. I protest I love thee. Why, then God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest that I love you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Fare you well. Tear ye, sweet Beatrice. I am gone. Oh, I am here. There is no love in you. I pray you, let me go! You be friends first. Sir, it's easier be friends with me than fight with my enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not proved in the height of villain? Of that have slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man. What, bear her in hand till they come to take hands? And then with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated 
but Beatrice. Off with a man at a window, a proper saying. But the sweet hero, she is wronged, she is slandered, she is undone. Hear me, Beatrice. Oh, princes and counts. A princely testimony, a goodly count. Count Comfort, a sweet gallant, surely. But I were a man for his sake. But I had any friend who would be a man for my sake. But man has melted into curtsies. And men are only turned into tongues, and trim ones, too. He is now as valiant as Hercules, who only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul that Count Claudio had wrong hero. Yea, as sure as I have thought or so. Enough! I've engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. So farewell. <laughs> Masters, it is already proved upon thee that thou art little more than false knaves. How answer you for yourselves? Mary, sir, we say we are not. <laughs> A marvelous witty fellow. But I will go about with him. Come you hither, sir. Yeah. Shall I always keep the best? Uh, wit is as quick as the greyhound's mouth. It catches. And yours is blunt as the fencer's foils, which hit but hurt not. A most manly wit marketing will not hurt a woman. And therefore, I pray thee, call in Beatrice, I give thee the bucklers. Give us thy swords. We have bucklers of our own. And you will use them, Margaret. You must put in the fights with the vice. And they are dangerous weapons for maids. Well, I will call Beatrice to you, who I think hath late. And therefore will come. The God of Love, who sits above, and knows me, and knows me, how pitiful I deserve. <laughs> in, in singing, but in loving, Mary, I cannot show it in rhyme. I have tried, I, I can find out no rhyme for lady, but baby, an innocent <laughs> rhyme. For scorn, a horn, a hard rhyme. For school, fool, a babbling rhyme. Very ominous endings. Mm -hmm. I was not born under a rhyming planet, nor I cannot woo in festival terms. Sweet <sighs> Beatrice, what's thou come when I call thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me go. Oh, stay but till then. Then it is spoken. Very well. And yet, ere I go, let me go with that which I came for. Is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudia. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is a foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore I will depart unkissed. Thou hast frightened the word out of his right sense. So forcible is thy wit. I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I must hear from him shortly, or I will subscribe him a coward. Now I pray thee tell me. For which of my bad qualities didn't thou first fall in love with me? For all of them together, which maintain so politic a state of evil that they will admit no good part to intermingle with them. But for which of my good parts did you first suffer love for me? Oh, suffer love, a good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart. If you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I cannot love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably, and therefore is it most expedient for the wise, if Don Worm, his conscience, find no impediment to the contrary, to be the trumpet of his own virtues, as I am to myself. So much for praising myself. Who by myself will bear witness is most praiseworthy. And thou, tell me, how doth your cousin? Very ill. And uh, how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God. Love me. 
and then. Farewell, I leave you two, for here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proof my lady hero hath been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John is the author of all. Will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thine eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncle's. <laughs> Troth, no, no more than reason. Well, then my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much deceived, for they swore that you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore that you were well nigh dead for me. There's no such matter. Then you do not love me. No. But in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I am sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her, for here's a letter. Written in his hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashion. To Beatrice. And here's oh, oh. another written in my cousin's own hand, stolen from her pocket, declaring her love unto Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> A miracle. Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee. But by this light, I take thee for pity. <laughs> <laughs> I would not deny thee. But by this good day, I yield under great persuasion. And in part to save your life, because I heard you were in the consumption. <laughs> How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? <laughs> I'll tell thee what, Prince, a college of witcrackers could not flout me out of my humor. Dost thou think I care for a satire or an epigram? No, if a man shall be beaten with brains, he shall wear nothing handsome about him. In short, since I do purpose to marry, I will think nothing to any purpose the world can say against it. Therefore, never flout at me for what I have said against it, for man is a giddy thing. And this is my conclusion. <laughs> I had well hoped thou wouldst have denied, Beatrice, that I might have cudgeled thee out of thy single life to make thee a double dealer, which out of question that would be if my cousin did not look exceedingly narrowly to thee. Come, come, we are friends. <laughs> Let's have a dance, and we're married to lighten our own hearts and our wives' heels. We'll have dancing afterwards. First of my word, therefore play music. Prince, thou art sad. Get thee a wife, get thee a wife. <laughs> Not on him till the morrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for him. Strike up, Pipers! <laughs> 